In this section, we introduce the bar plot. A bar plot is a univariate plot that is shown on a two-dimensional set of axes. There is a category axis and a value axis. In this example bar plot, I've shown the household expenses on an annual basis, with each type of expense as a category and the length of the corresponding bar giving the value. The interpretation of the bar plot does not change if the category axis is reordered. However, to assist your reader, you should always show that category axis in an order that best conveys your message. When I show the categories here in alphabetical order, there is no obvious message from it. But the moment the categories are reordered from lowest to highest value, we have now helped the reader find the most expensive and lowest expenses. The message now is a whole lot clearer. One problem often seen with bar plots is that they are used when a time series plot would have been more appropriate. Here on the left is a bad choice for using a bar plot. A time series plot of the same data uses much less ink. The bar plot is wasteful in this case because the bar itself represents the data in a highly redundant way. The left edge, the right edge, the height of the bar, the numbers position vertically along the page, the top edge of the bar, as well as the number itself. All six of these convey the same information. A time series plot of the data is much more efficient. This is the concept of data ink. The data ink ratio is the number of pixels used to represent actual data divided by the number of pixels used for the entire graphic. Another way that we can express the data ink ratio is 1 minus the proportion of ink that can be erased without losing any information. We should always aim to maximize this data ink ratio. This implies you should only use pixels to show data. Don't add unnecessary graphics or embellishments to your plot that are unrelated to the data. In many cases, the bar plot can be replaced by a table and still convey the information just as effectively. The key learning is that you don't always have to use a plot. Humans can easily read and process tables that are about one page in size. It is a fallacy that you must always plot your data. Lastly, don't use cross-hatching or textures or shading in a bar plot. This can set up unusual visualizations which are hard to read. Some interesting ways in which a bar plot can be modified is to rotate the categories so that they are shown horizontally, as you saw earlier. A vertical category axis can be hard to read, even with diagonal labeling. To save space, you can also place your labels inside the bars. This is great for small, compact displays like on a cell phone or a tablet.